So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Nikita Solov, Customer Success Director at Evasys North America. Thank you for joining us for our session on PeopleSoft to Oracle Cloud Transformation. This session is designed exclusively for healthcare industry leaders. With me, I have our industry speakers for today, Jamie Wyatt, Mike King, and Kevin Gardner. So with this, I will pass it over to Mike King. My name is Mike King. I'm SVP of Healthcare for North America. I've got 20 plus years of experience in Oracle and 15 plus years experience in healthcare. With me, I have Jamie White. Jamie, you want to introduce yourself quickly? Kevin, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, so, so Kevin Gardner, I'm the Regional Director for Healthcare. Um, as you see, I have 15 years of uh, healthcare industry experience. 10 years of uh, Oracle ERP and EPM ATM. So I've spent a fair amount of time in the environment and uh, was also a formal, former VP uh, of Oracle Healthcare from the technology side. Uh, so great to be with you guys today and excited to uh, be with you and share this content. Uh, Jamie. Hi, Kevin. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it wasn't coming off mute for whatever reason. Uh, good afternoon and good morning. I'm Jamie White. I'm a regional director of healthcare uh, here at EvoSyst, I've been in healthcare industry for 35 plus years, uh, 20 plus with Oracle, ERP, HCM and the like. I'm a former VP of Oracle Healthcare as well as a former VP of Health Industries at PeopleSoft. So uh, this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Next slide there, Jamie. There you go. Thank you. So just quick, uh, our agenda for the call, we're gonna talk a little bit about EvoSyst and our healthcare expertise. Um, why cloud, why now? The value of the cloud and moving to the cloud. Assessing your current PeopleSoft environment, how we do that. Um, Outcome-based design and delivery, and that's how we actually migrate PeopleSoft clients like yourselves to the cloud, and what's in your PeopleSoft closet. We're gonna talk about our assessment offer to help do this. Next slide. So a little bit about Evosys as a company. We've been in business 15 plus years. Um, we're an Oracle Premium Platinum Partner. We have over 1,150 cloud customers that we've implemented, um, and many of these in the healthcare space. That's our largest vertical. We have a global footprint where we've implemented healthcare solutions, not only in North America, but outside of North America. Um, we've got over 1,500 plus consultants, a fair number of those dedicated specifically just to the healthcare practice that we have. We've won a number of awards with Oracle. We were HCM Partner of the Year, Global Partner of the Year, and also ERP Partner of the Year. Um, this is really great for our customers and clients because it gives us access to strategy and development, which is uh, really important for uh, us representing our clients moving forward. We're a one-stop cloud shop for Oracle. We do all their pillars. So we implement everything Oracle has and everything Oracle sells, so we can do everything needed that you may have at, want access to from the Oracle Cloud solution. We're a full service um, firm. We obviously do implementation, but we also do managed services. We're going to talk about our EvoSys Glide program, which is how we take clients people soft to the cloud. We have a special methodology to do that. And again, as I said, we're a number of industries, but healthcare is our largest worldwide. Next slide, Jamie. This is just a sampling of some of the clients that we have. And again, we have a lot of them um, to pick out from a North American perspective. You've got Adventist Health, uh, Indiana University Health, Grady. And we also have done the NHS for the UK, which is the National Health System of the of the UK. So again, lots of experience implementing and transforming healthcare companies to the cloud. Based on our experience, we've also put together a number of healthcare accelerators, and these accelerators really help during the implementation process. We have a repository of healthcare specific chart of accounts that we can use. We have pre built reports and KPI libraries specifically for healthcare and focus on healthcare information and data. We have ready to use integrations to integrate to Epic, Kronos, et cetera. Um, so we already have pre-built integrations for a number of the systems that you would need to tie to. We've got data conversion tools that really help migrate that data from PeopleSoft to the Oracle Cloud 
very efficiently and very effectively. We also have ready to use solutions, for example, resident refunds, budgeting and services by payer, et cetera. So we've built out solutions that, that are very important for this vertical that, you, that come out of the box to use. And we have a punch out repository to use for your vendors. So why cloud and why now? I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie to let him walk through this particular section. And again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Jamie? Thanks, Mike, I appreciate it. And uh, I thank you everybody for attending today. I think that uh, one of the things that you always see and always understand is that uh, in moving forward, we need to, uh, to look at what the challenges in healthcare are. And, and right now, the biggest challenges that we see, you know, we've identified a little bit uh, up front. Um, and what that does is that gives you an idea as to, you know, the impact of the, the pandemic, the, how it impacts the financial health and, and the changing workforce in an organization and how that empowers the use of, of the people and the technologies out there. So as we move forward and talk about um, moving people soft, uh, to the cloud. We'll talk a little bit about this and, and how this all fits in. And ultimately, I, I like to go back to the question of what do we hear? Uh, and what do we hear from people? What are they telling us? Um, and you know, what are they focused on when we have this conversation? And what we hear commonly is, um, and being a former PeopleSoft person, heard for years, we don't know the scope of our enhancements. We don't know the customizations. Um, there's some tribal knowledge out there of customizations, but limited knowledge. What's out there? How many? Where are they? Um, and, and when you start to couple that with not understanding what the ROI is to move to the cloud, it starts to create, create some confusion. And, and what folks don't understand is how they can justify the cost of moving into the cloud. And what is that cost? So they're looking for an assessment process. You know, they, they say they need to understand how to better assess moving to the cloud. But we also hear constantly, and I think anybody that's a, a long time PeopleSoft customer uh, can, can concur, that uh, keeping up with the updates in the PUMs leave a lot of organizations stagnant. Um, and really, uh, the way a lot of organizations manage that is hold up, wait, gather a bunch up, and do a big upgrade, and that's a costly process. So there is a recognition that there, there are issues out there. And when you do that, you have to bring the platform forward as well from an infrastructure standpoint. Uh, all of those things also coupled with the fact that there are no automation tools or limited. Uh, most people are using third-party tools out there, UiPath or um, you know any of the other uh, Blue Prism, uh, other uh, third-party tools for automation. Um, the need for mobile and remote, as organizations change what they do, expand the services they provide, the need to have mobile and remote capabilities and move people off of desktops so they can interact with the system is becoming a bigger issue and organizations are saying that they need more access. Um, they're starting to find, have difficulty keeping and finding people with people soft talent. There's a value there. Um, people are getting recruited away or they don't wanna work on an old technology. And then one thing that we're hearing a lot more and more is the senior executives are looking for more detailed analytics and organizations really can't deliver them without third-party tools. So we keep on coming back to this uh, stagnant, needing third-party tools and needing more capabilities. And in reality, that's where on-premise systems are relative to the cloud. They can't keep up. So when you look at the cloud model and the Oracle cloud model, you're looking at a, a solution that rolls out quarterly updates to the customer base and drives innovation and, and adaptation at a much higher pace. In the traditional on-premise world, you need to manage that IT infrastructure and upgrade it and manage it in order to do an upgrade. And then you need the people to manage all of that and, and the like. Your ability to respond is, is not at the level with an on-premise system as with a, a cloud-based system. Organizations are recognizing it and they're recognizing there's value in, in making the cha change and the changes now. Right. So when you look at the 
overall business value comparison between the two areas, right? Or the two solution sets. When you look at PeopleSoft traditionally, it was an on-premise model um, with obviously the infrastructure that was needed. Uh, both the, the financial and supply chain side had different data models than what the HCM side had, right? Or has. And then when you talk about managing your upgrades, you got to do that in a manual process. When you talk about the Oracle Cloud, what you have as a solution that has been designed as a single solution with a unified data model. What that does is that gives Oracle the ability to push out quarterly updates automatically and drive innovation, right? So where you might see some tactical improvements with your PUMs, what Oracle is driving on a quarterly basis is innovation. And it's all being done on a single platform. So it's gonna help condense your cost, drive a higher business value, whereas in the, the current business PeopleSoft world, you know, it, it's getting more and more challenging to get, derive business value because it's gaining more cost over time to maintain PeopleSoft. And each time you have to make that leap to the next level, uh, it's a big step for you. So Mike mentioned assessing your PeopleSoft environment, and that's something that we believe here uh, at EvoSys is, is a critical first step. Uh, because we use a value-based process, and we'll, we're going to talk about that and talk about how you transform from PeopleSoft to the cloud as part of that. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about an assessment, and we're offering today as part of this, this webinar a free automated assessment. And what that automated assessment does is we, we provide you an assessment tool, and that assessment tool will crawl into your PeopleSoft instance, and it'll gather a great deal of information for us. We may add on some, some additional discovery questions so we can better fill in what we gather as part of that assessment. And then we'll provide back to you a, a, an assessment report that talks about the number of customizations, the number of reports, uh, the number of new screens, and a whole host of other uh, data related to your PeopleSoft environment. Because really, uh, it gives you uh, an, an idea as to where you're starting from. You can see how many reports you have, but how many have been used in the last two years, right? So we're gonna gather all of that information, right? And that's the start of the, of the EvoSys process, what we call Glide, to move an organization from their PeopleSoft on-premise solution to the Oracle Cloud. We go through an assessment phase, we dig into insights where we start to, to dig into the solution, look at what key performance indicators you can use to help drive the return on investment, the justification of moving forward with that, that taking on the Oracle Cloud. As part of that, we'll also provide advisory services that look at the cloud versus your current PeopleSoft environment. One of the big concerns people have is, well, you know, we've customized that environment to work exactly how we want it to work. And we're not sure anything can, can work for us moving into the future. Well, we can help you through that process because what we can do here is we can do that gap analysis and identify what pre-built solutions we have and that, that are available within the Oracle realm, as well as our capability to add in enhancements additional capabilities using Oracle technology to deliver on that and deliver on that transformation technology. Ultimately, if you move forward, you're gonna to adopt to the cloud. How do you do the data extraction? Because it's important to work with an organization that understands PeopleSoft's data, understand how the concept of a business unit maps into Oracle, how the concept of an inventory business unit maps into Oracle and all of those things and all of the terminology and, and everything that goes with it. We're gonna bring with it a pre-built report library and we're gonna provide test scripts. We're gonna automate that process. And then we're gonna talk, to, talk about that last step in, in this process and that's shifting you to the cloud and, and working with your team, with your assets to work towards the, a model of value-based analytics driven model and delivery. So how are we going to do that? So first with the assessment, talk about that free assessment. How are we going to deliver? Question. Yeah, Jimmy, please. I have a question for you. Yeah. So like a lot of times people want to know, right, with the assessment, um, what what type of you know resources are needed from their side? Like does that um, you know, does that affect any type uh, of resources from a team perspective on, on their standpoint? Like what's that look like? 
Yeah, pretty straightforward, actually. We'll send uh, we'll send a link to to download um, download some an exec and executable, and then they'll run it within their PeopleSoft environment, and they just have to provide us the results. So it's it's limited involvement from that standpoint. If we have some questions as a follow up, there might be some follow up time and effort there. But that is that assessment tool is an automated tool. It's intended to go in because we understand how PeopleSoft is configured. We understand the fields. We, we understand all of that. We've taken advantage of that knowledge to build an automated tool that will extract that information. Now, when we come back. No, not at all, not at all. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through the configuration, identify the customizations, what business processes are customized, you know, so what in finance, what in procure to pay, what in various parts of HCM, what are customized, what fields may have been added, what fields may have been modified, those types of things, screens added, screens modified, SQLs, queries, all of those things to give a, a, an idea of the scope of the project, but we don't stop there because we'll also look at, as a next step, a technology assessment. And we'll look at it from the standpoint of using remote process or remote process automation, right? RPA to automate steps in the thing, the process. What do you have out there that's repetitive, manual, that we can automate? in your business processes. We're also gonna look at the infrastructure surrounding to make sure that, that you can take advantage of and, and where do you stand with your, your current data security requirements, your current reporting tools and how are things set up. And then we're gonna work with our value-based analytics concept and visualize and baseline your current stack state. So you understand where you, you stand over a period of time relative to certain key performance indicators to identify your pain points. And these are really important for organizations because A, this can help identify what you'll focus on to help justify the value of moving forward. Uh, they will also give you a long-term view of how you've improved uh, to leverage. And we as EvoSys would actually leverage them during the, the implementation process as part of the conference room pilot process. But all of these things are driving KPIs right out of the Oracle solution. They're, they don't require any effort on behalf of the customer. So we'll pull them out of PeopleSoft, and then ultimately, as you move to Oracle, you'll see these same types of things uh, generated in the KPIs out of Oracle. And the way we do that is we focus on that outcome based delivery. So when you look at that, that outcomes-based delivery, say we've identified a key performance indicator. In this example, we wanna reduce the cycle time from the time we get the AP invoice until it's actually created. And the, the industry numbers out there say, you know, the worst kind of averages are in the 22nd or 22 hour realm. The upper court, court aisle is eight hours. This organization's currently showing is it takes 14 hours. They wanna move it to eight hours. How do we get there? Right, there's gonna be part that EvoSys delivers because we're gonna configure the system and work with the customer to, to have a dashboard and monitor this specific KPI to see how we're moving from that current 14 hours down to our goal of eight hours. The client is also going to define the specific roles and help make this happen. But here's the key. As part of the way EvoSys approaches this and to ins help ensure your success, we'll do final measurement of KPIs maybe six months or a year post implementation. So hold that thought because what we're talking about is doing a series of insights from our KPI library, 150 plus KPIs that you can start to use to drive real insight and real results with a result-driven focus, and we will use that as a component in what we call out, outcome-based contracting. We will build our project plan around the concept of these KPIs that have been agreed upon with you, the customer, to build in a risk-reward factor on the back end to ensure that you're achieving the KPIs. 
So let me pause here. And Kevin, do we have any questions on this? Yeah, I mean, just kind of another common question that actually, there's none showing up in the chat yet, but a common question that people have in this area, Jamie, um, with our 150 KPIs, which is, you know, pretty expansive, what if there's a KPI that is not in that library? Can that be designed specifically for the client if they wanted to track something that was not in that library? Absolutely. If they can sit down and work with us to, to, if you will, scope out what that KPI and what the components of that KPI are, absolutely. We can we can identify, build that KPI out and identify from that risk reward standpoint um, where they want to move. So, you know, maybe, you know, it's a, a KPI that their current mark is four days for something and they want to move it to two days. How do they do that? And they'll be able to chart that and see the progress over time. And you know, you look at somebody like a Warren Buffett, and and he talks you know about putting skin in the game. And we're a firm believer uh, in our methodology and our skill set in order to put skill in the game in order for you to to achieve these outcomes. So how do we do that? So we we talked a little bit about that gap analysis, and and Oracle does have pre-built Healthcare best practices built in. In addition, EvoSys rolls out some additional healthcare specific solutions around things like staff scheduling extension, par level management, cost accounting, budgeting and forecasting. All of these things are specific models and enhancements and extensions to Oracle within Oracle, all built with Oracle tools and technology that come as part of, of the project, right? But it doesn't just stop there because that's taking advantage of just Oracle out of the box and, and, and taking advantage of the solution. But to supercharge what you're looking to do and to take advantage of the value of the cloud and the transformational technologies that are available, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a lot about uh, using digital assistants or chatbots to fuel what you do. Uh, anything from allowing a supplier to make an inquiry on an invoice to a paid time off request or an expense report, uh, or even an executive looking at their smartphone and asking a question about where you stand in this month's um, financials from a budget extense, expense standpoint. All of those things are in the realm of a chatbot and the ability to use smart technology, smartphone, tablets, and put it in the hands of of your users in a way that you've never been able to do before. And then you take that next level and look at ro robotic process automation. What RPA is really doing is gives you the ability to automate things that you've had to manage manu manually or maybe not even manage in the past. Uh, things around testing, there's a lot of value in, in automating test scripts and the like. And, and frankly, we'll talk about that here in a moment as to how uh, how we take advantage of it as part of your implementation and get you to start to understand the value of, of the moving forward with RPA. And then there's the key component of advising on data management. All right, what do we need to do relative to your data moving as we transition and transform from PeopleSoft to the Oracle Cloud? Uh, how do we want to extract it? What does it need to look like? And then as we extract it, we move into the data migrator concept and we've already started to work with, okay, pre-built dashboards and audit capabilities and security identified for thousands of data fields and data structures and the like. So what you start to get as part of that process is you start to get the the value of moving to the cloud and driving that data into the cloud in a very clean and concise format so you're cleaning up any past issues with your people soft data maybe you've changed organizational structures maybe you want to see data differently you can manage that all as part of that data migration process but understand that evasys understands the people soft data as it exists and how we need to map it to the oracle world that's typically done a couple months behind 
the most recent Oracle release. So that's well within the scope of the project, makes sense uh, timing wise and delivers a lot of value as you were to move forward into that process. And as you get deeper and deeper into it, instead of migrating a bunch of reports over from people's staff and, and trying to look at that and figure out where the data lie, we have a, a pre-built report library where you get to start to select reports for each business process stream each solution area. So you can see hundreds for finance, HCM and procurement that you get to pick from that are at the minimum, they're starting points. Uh, at the maximum, they give you pretty much everything that you need. We talked about testing. Uh, we'll deliver the pre-built test scripts. You can see the number of, of pre-built test scripts we have, and we use that RPA capability to drive that um, process and to uh, to move changes from test to production. So helping you understand how that process comes into play, speeding the, the testing process, but ultimately uh, driving a, a higher value by using RPA. And then finally, there's the concept of change management. Any uh, major project like we're talking about, uh, we really have to work with the stakeholders. We need to share our experience. We need to bring the toolkit that we have and not only get people to, to take on the concept of adopting uh, the, the changes, but really adapting the business uh, along the lines of, of how the cloud can change your business. We see a lot of organizations when they look at that adapt concept, leapfrogging business processes, not just changing them, but but dynamically changing a business process. So lastly, we've gone, we're going live, and uh, you as an organization want to, to understand how do we do this? Number one, we're gonna provide a, a functionality change guide. So from PeopleSoft to Oracle, what does that look like? There'll be the learning associated that uh, with end users, and, and we can go so far um, within a, a, the services to provide some very specific tools and capabilities to help the end users understand the before and the after and how to make that, that transition. And we'll help with that uh, terminology trans, translation guide, uh, if you will. So we'll help to start move your move the capabilities and shift your assets to the cloud. But we're also going to use those analytics to help you in an advisory capability drive the process forward. So you can see not just from a process standpoint, you can see how system adoption is occurring, um, as well as how the results of audit and compliance moving forward. Some of our customers like the towards the end of the process, look at an innovation council so that they're looking beyond the go-live timeframe and how they continue to adopt innovations as each of the quarterly capabilities or updates come out from, from Oracle. And what we do to help provide that, for, provide trans translational services is we provide a hypercare period. So uh, it might be the first period end after go-live, it might be certain, things around the next four quarterly updates. It might be four weeks of intensive support services, uh, anything uh, like that post go live to help with the transition. And then we do provide full service, managed service support for extended support. And we we take that on for uh, many of our customers if they want uh, EvoSys to provide level one support for them. And that all comes with a series of, of learning videos that uh, people can take advantage of uh, using things like uh, YouTube and the like. So with that, Kevin, I, I think I'll turn things over to you to kind of transition us to the end. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. That's uh, some good information there, obviously, and this assessment process and what we do to help you understand um, your people soft environment and moving to the cloud. Um, a lot of times organizations really wanna know when they make that, that decision to transform the business and transition uh, from PeopleSoft to, to the Oracle Cloud, how does that deliver you know, long-term value uh, to the organization? So we've really kind of broken that down. Here are just a few things that provide some, some food for thought and what we've seen as organizations make that, that transition. And really, 
when you look at some of the things that uh, Jamie touched on earlier, really having a single data model, right? A source of truth is huge in simplifying your environment, right? And that really leads to the elimination of the need for, for multiple third-party solutions. And a lot of organizations really embrace that simplification process um, to really help them not be, be more agile as a company and provide more insight, but also that, uh, that ease of use um, for the platform. But more importantly, what we see is, is really delivering access to the edges of your organization and beyond, right? Making sure that lines of business have access to various reports, uh, various insights uh, to the business so they can make calculated business decisions is very important. And, and really what we see too in, in today's environment and how we interact in our lives is really that need for mobile access to, to maximize the access to the application, um, to really understand it. And we know with, you know, over the last year that the office has moved outside the office and really being able to access that information from anywhere is really important. And, and lastly, as we, we kind of bring it in here, just the usage of digital assistance and that automation process to, you know, eliminate that that uh, the manual process that are involved inside the organization or the redundancy of tasks is is huge, um, and and also using those those digital assistants to, you know, really clear uh, testing and and the processes around testing is huge, um, you know, realistically when organizations make this transformation they want to know what's derived how do they derive the most value um, out of you know an investment like this and so what we're doing is really providing that 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 opportunity to understand that there is a path that the journey is clear and that organizations have the opportunity to make an impact um, in leveraging this technology so what we'll do kind of as we as we close things here our question for you, for those of you that are on this call today, is what's in your PeopleSoft closet? What, what is there that you may or may not understand? What's been built from a reporting aspect? Would you like to know and understand what's there? And that's really where this assessment is valuable uh, to the organization. We would love to schedule some time uh, to be able to come in and really provide this free assessment where you heard us talk about, there's really no lifting from your side. It's, it's done using scripts. And so we'd be happy um, to help you understand not just um, what's inside your PeopleSoft closet, but what that transformation from PeopleSoft on-prem to the cloud really looks like today. Um, we really appreciate everyone making time. What we're gonna do now is open it up to, to any questions that may, out, may be out there. Um, we haven't seen too many come through chat, uh, so if there's anything that, uh, that you have that you want to know, we'll, we'll go ahead and kind of open that up and, and plug that into chat, if you will. And, and while we're waiting, maybe just Jamie, one last question here that typically comes up. You know, you talked about KPIs and the importance of providing that insight to the business. A lot of clients want to know, after they go live and they develop these KPIs, how do they maintain that? Or how do they stay on top of those KPIs? What, what do we have that will help them really understand how to stay on top and, and dive into those KPIs? Uh, great question, Kevin. And, and this is one of the things that really shows the value of the cloud. Uh, really, the KPIs are based on the data that lies within Oracle. What we've done is we've just designed the, the dashboards and, and KPIs so we can collect that information and, and present it. So it really doesn't require anything of the client moving forward to continue those KPIs. So if we use that turnover KPI as an example for invoice entry, um, well after go live, I mean, two, three years down the line, they could still be monitoring that KPI to see that they were staying on track, that they're hitting their numbers or they're getting better. Um, that doesn't go away. And as those upgrades occur, the data model, you know, enforces that. Very nice.
But I think it's also, you know, important to know, you know, as we come in and we do this assessment and we're, you know, we've, you've heard Mike uh, King talk earlier about the amount of clients, a little under 1,200 that we've helped transition to the cloud. Um, you know, I think it's important to note that a center of excellence has really been built around, you know, this movement from people soft on-prem to the cloud. And really what we're trying to do for clients today is really de-risk you know that that uh, that transitional standpoint, right? And and the risks that's associated with moving to the cloud. Um, being able to use these consultants, these KPIs, this insight really helps accelerate that that movement from on-prem to the cloud. And you know what we're seeing across the board with a lot of organizations, especially over the last year, is just that that additional insight um, that's provided as people make that that transformation. And I think more importantly just across the board as people are looking at you know these insights and really understanding how do they make that move we know that the last year in, in the situation that uh, we've all been on has really kind of helped accelerate you know those roadmaps and that understanding of what that process looks like and um you know here at evosys we 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 help you understand that and hopefully we'll provide some great insight uh to help your organization make that transformation um, Jamie, I'm not seeing any other questions uh, come through the chat here. Um, I, I think if there's anything else, you know, from a closing standpoint, um, you know, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, just my last comment is regarding the free assessment. It, it really is free. It takes a minimal amount of effort on our client's behalf to get a great deal of information. and. Um, Maybe I help identify what the journey ahead looks like and uh, help to identify when you want to do it uh, or if, if you want to do it now versus waiting. You know, what's the right time for you? We're here to help. We look forward to uh, talking with you and answering your questions. You'll see at the bottom of the screen are Kevin, Mike, and my email addresses. Please don't hesitate to uh, reach out. I know we'll be forwarding a copy of this presentation or a link to this presentation um, to everybody who's attended. We thank you for your time. And again, uh, please let us know how we can help and uh, answer the question, what is in your PeopleSoft closet? So thank you everybody and have a wonderful day.